Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to see how to query records by date up to but not including midnight. And I know this one seems weird, but yes, we've got a requirement where it's got to be up to and including 11.59.59 p.m. We can't just say less than tomorrow at midnight. You'll see why in just a minute. Today's question comes from Dylan in Newton, Iowa, one of my gold members. Dylan says, I'm using a technique similar to your value from a form video. I have two text boxes on my main menu to specify a start date time and an end date time for a query that shows orders within that time range. I want the default to be all orders from yesterday because we check it daily. So I had it set to greater than or equal to date minus one, that's yesterday at midnight, and less than date, which is today at midnight, right? Early this morning for the criteria. But my stubborn boss insists that the end date time in the query criteria should explicitly be 11.59.59 p.m. instead of using simpler logic like the less than today's date. How can I handle this requirement? Oh, it's the stubborn boss. I love this. You don't know how many times in my... 20 plus year consulting career that I had to deal with clients that were like, well, no, we want it to look this way just because that's how we want it. Or this is how we've always, my favorite one, this is how we've always done it. So we have to have our new database do it that way too, even though it's wildly inefficient. I used to love that one. All right, but let's take a look at how I would set this up and then we'll fix it for your picky boss. Okay. Just don't let your boss see this video that we're making fun of him. Okay. Okay. Maybe I should, you know what? I'll change your name there. Now, now we won't know it's you. <laughs> okay, anyways. Uh, before we get into it, this is gonna be an expert level video. It's a little bit beyond the beginner stuff. Uh, we are gonna use a couple functions in here, some query criteria. We're not gonna need any VB programming, although I am gonna use one line of programming to make this button where it shows the orders. It just opens up a query. You can use the command button wizard for that. You don't have to use VBA, but we're gonna sneak some VBA in anyways. I'll show you how to do it both ways, don't worry. But you should definitely know how to use access query criteria, how to get a value from an open form, right? So you can use this value here as your criteria for this query. And to do what Dylan, or, or to do what not Dylan wants to do, uh, we're gonna use the date add function. So go watch these. If you haven't uh, seen any of these before, go watch them and then come on back. All right, so here's a copy of my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy off my website if you want to. Here's my main menu. I've already got a date field on here. We'll adjust this in just a minute. And I've got orders in my order table with dates on them. We'll, we'll adjust these so we got some times on these. A lot of people have uh, their order dates that come in with times on them so that you can tell exactly what time of day the order was placed, which might be important for a retail or even an online operation. But let's say today is uh, December 10th. So let's say we got a bunch of orders from yesterday. So 12, nine, I'll just do one without a without a time on it. 12, nine at 8 a.m. 12, nine at 1 p.m. And then uh, 12, nine at 11 p.m. And then we'll do one at 12, 10. And then 12, 10 at 1 a.m. All right, so we should see just these orders if we do it right. All right, so let's close this up. Save changes, sure. I'm gonna come into my menu here and let's uh, move some stuff around here for just a minute. We'll make this our start date. Come here, sit nicely right there, okay. Start date, it'll be start date time. We're gonna put a time on there, so I'll make this longer so we can fit all of that in there. Um, now, I'm gonna name this instead of current date, we'll call it start date. And the control source is currently set to equals date, which means that this text box will always be the current date and you can't change it with a control source. Control source says you are set to this value. Okay, but I'm going to use uh, data. I'm gonna use default value instead. And I'm gonna say this is gonna be equal to date minus one. That'll be yesterday at midnight. If you're not familiar with how that works, go watch my date math video, right? You can add one to a date or subtract one from a date. That's one day, okay? All right, so I'm gonna take start date. I'm gonna copy and paste it. We're gonna make this the end date. All right, now normally, let's change the name first, right? End date. Okay, now normally 
I would make this today's date. Because if you want yesterday's records, you could say, give me greater than or equal to start date and then less than end date, right? Like this, let's change this. There's our dates right there. Okay, that looks good. Now we make a query, right? Create query design. We bring in the order table. Close that, close that. I'm gonna say, let's say I just wanna see the order ID, the customer ID and the order date. All right, that's what I get. Now I put my criteria on right here in the criteria field. I'm gonna shift F2 to zoom in so you can see that's gonna be greater than or equal to forms, main menu F start date. And now normally I would have today at midnight. So it would just be less than forms, main menu F end date. And that would work properly normally, right? Save it, let's call this uh, order uh, criteria Q or whatever you wanna call it. All right, now when I run this, there's the proper set of dates. Notice I'm not seeing any of the orders from today with 1210 because it's less than that date. And this is how I normally would do it, right? But we're dealing with Picky Boss and Picky Boss doesn't wanna see that there. Picky Boss wants to see 129 at 11, 59, 59 p.m. How do we put that there? Well, to do that, we're gonna come back into here and instead of equals date like that, we're gonna use the date add function and subtract one second from that. There's a couple ways you could do it if you wanna subtract the second. Keeping in mind date math, right? You could say minus, and then you could go one divided by 24, that's hours, now you got hours, Divided by 60, you got minutes. Divided by 60 again, you got seconds. So that is one second right there. This should work, let's test it. <laughs> let's see what we get. Main menu. And I'm only seeing a short date there, but it's there. Why am I only seeing the short date? Let's check the format. If you're ever not seeing the date that you expect, let's check the format. And oh yeah, 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 it's set the short date. Right, short date will chop off the time portion. So we gotta change this back to a general date. General date. So let's go back in here and do it again. And there we go. All right, so we've subtracted one second. That's one way to do it, is with date math. The other way is using the date add function. I know we wanna subtract, but remember, subtraction is just adding a negative. All right, so let's come into data in here. So this is one way you could do it. This is certainly valid. Or you could say it's date add what are we adding a second how many are we adding negative one what are we adding it to date the date function that's today's date now also subtract one second from today and now boom we get the same thing so there's two different ways to do it okay i i don't know i i, I use them both all the time interchangeably this is, makes more sense for someone else who's reading it that might not understand what you're doing. <laughs> if, you, if you go one divided by 24 divided by 60 divided by 60, okay. Anyways, all right, the problem that we have now though is that we have to change our criteria in our query because this now needs to also include that end date, that end date time. Because if you do have an order at 11.59.59, you gotta include it. Fortunately. The access date time, the basic date time field only goes to the seconds. So you don't have to worry about fractions of a second. Uh, date time extended does. So this only works with the regular date time, the classic access date time field. Okay, so you save that and you close it and you close it. Now, if your picky boss also wants to see a time on that, the default is if it's at 12 midnight with general date, you won't see it. So if you wanna force that on there, you'll have to use a custom format custom format, which in this case you'd need to do, um, I'm using the ISO date format, which is YYYY-MM-DD space HH NN for minutes, because M is month, so N is minutes, unlike Excel, which is weird, SS for seconds, and then AM slash PM, unless you want 24 hour, then just leave that off. There's your custom date format, save it, Close it, open it, there you go. And hopefully, not Dylan, 
that will satisfy your picky boss. And it also still works. Oh, that's the hello world button. Oh, I, I told you earlier I was going to show you how to do this both ways to open that query. Because I was just opening the query over here, and that will work just fine. But if you want to make a button to do it, okay, I'll show you both ways real quick. Let's move hello world out of the way. First is you can use the wizard. So if you don't want to do any programming, that's fine. Um, just go to form design, grab a button, drop it down here. When the wizard starts up, did I just say, whoop? <laughs> when the wizard starts up, Go to miscellaneous, run query, next. What query do you want? The one we just created, next. Um, do it, do it, All right? That's your caption, <laughs> next. Give it a meaningful name, uh, the, 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 the open order button, and then finish, and there it is. And save it, close it, open it, boom, there's your query. That's the non-programming way. The programming way is to, I'll just hijack this button. You just drop a button on here, All right? Right click, build event. And instead of this status here, you say do command, open query, open query if I could type today. And then it's order criteria Q. See, once you know the programming, once you know the commands, it's even faster to do it this way than it was to do it with the button wizard. Save it, close it, close it open it this one works too that's it there you go so the trick here was knowing how to do that by subtracting a second from today's date and the rest of it was all just to build up for that so <laughs> hope you hope you enjoyed hope you learned something and if you are vba curious if you want to learn this crazy thing called vba programming well check it out i got a video right here it's free it's 20 minutes long it teaches you everything you need to know to get started and if not, if you don't want to be a programmer, but you still want to do cool stuff and access, I got this thing called the expert level, which is between beginner and developer. And I've got 32 of these and they cover all kinds of cool things and functions and, and different stuff that you can learn with access, different types of queries, uh, you name it, all kinds of stuff that's cool that doesn't involve any programming. There's 32 levels of this too. You do a little trig and we do all kinds of stuff. I cover all the functions, aggregate functions, daytime functions, math functions, string functions, you name it, I cover it. But that's going to do it, folks. That's your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. A special thank you and shout out to our Diamond sponsors. First, we have Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions, manufacturing experts specializing in Access and SQL Server. Juan is a 13-time Microsoft Access MVP. You can check them out at accessexperts.com. Another shout out to Sammy Shama from Shama Consultancy. Sammy is a certified Microsoft Office specialist, and he not only offers access application development, but he also provides one-on-one -on -one tutoring services. So if you need someone to hold your hand and help you with your access project, Sammy is your guy. Check him out at shamaconsultancy.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member, and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link.
Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.